Hey everyone, I'm Thomas, a.k.a. Mr. Warburg, and this is the 49th episode of the Mr. Warburg Show. Third day, third video, same shirt. Today we're talking about comic book movies. I'm ranking my top ten. Not really going to go super in-depth, because yesterday's video ran a lot longer than I thought it was going to go. Uh, so I'm going to keep this one fairly short. Just going to do a quick ten through one, and then let you guys, you know, bitch in the comments about how wrong I am. Now, when I was making this list, one kind of stuck out to me. One was like, man, I kind of got to put this in the list just because it's so weird, and I never see it in any of these lists, but I think it should be, because it's based on more of a graphic novel than a comic, but not one that was super popular. But I think the movie was far better than, you know, its source material. And that's Red, or R-E-D, Retired Extremely Dangerous. Uh, it had Bruce Willis, Morgan Freeman, Helen Mirren, uh, John Malkovich. I think it had... Oh, what is the guy that plays... Um, the Russian dude, the guy that plays... Uh, Striker in X, X2. Oh, what is his name? Can't remember. Maybe I'll put a picture up, uh, of his face. But he plays, uh, one of the kind of Russian antagonists terms, kind of like protagonists at the end. And Carl Urban. You know, it's one of the first times I was like, man, Carl Urban guy. And I didn't see him in, you know, like, weird hair, like in Lord of the Rings or anything like that. I was like, man, I fucking love this guy. And it was just a movie that was a lot of fun. And I think it, you know, a little underrated in terms of the comic book movies because it's not about a superhero. You know, or a group of superheroes. It's just about a bunch of old spies who kick all the ass. And that's why it's number 10 on my list. All right, number 9 is X-Men First Class and kind of Days of Future Past because they kind of go so well together uh, in terms of a package along with the Wolverine, uh, the unrated specifically of that one. But I think First Class is the best of that bunch. And the reason I have it at number 9 is that it really rebooted X-Men in a time where it was a flagging franchise where they had had two stinkers come out in X3 and Wolverine Origins. So it just worked really, really well. It was a ton of fun. It took you back to the 60s era, which was done super well in a kind of a period superhero piece, which outside of, say, Captain America and maybe Wonder Woman, we don't see, like, at all in live-action comic books, or at least outside of maybe flashbacks here and there. So it did really, really well, and it was just a very likable cast who've all gone on to do really awesome things, specifically like Jennifer Lawrence, Michael Fassbender's really blown up, and his Magneto was the standout of those three movies, slash, well, he, he, it's just three. Yeah, it's the first class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse. He's easily the standout of all of those movies. And James McAvoy, awesome as Xavier. Great cameo, too, in uh, first class. One of the best uses of cameo and the F word at the same time ever in cinema. Okay, number eight, keeping it in the X-Men family. And this is one of my first great comic book movie loves, and that's X2, X-Men United. Uh, it's one of the first times I remember having a group of superheroes all on the screen at the same time, either fighting with or against each other. And it all turns into kind of the same thing. They're fighting amongst themselves while all trying to survive at the end. And the beginning of the Phoenix Saga, which kind of stinks, or stings a little bit because of where we know X3 ended, but I just refuse to admit that's a thing. So I'm just, I just leave X2 going, man, I really wish they'd made a, a Phoenix Saga movie. Because whatever they made doesn't count. Alright, so for number seven, still Marvel, but actual Marvel Studios proper, and that's the Avengers. Um, much like X2, that just seeing it all come together on screen with all these different characters that you've gotten to know, whereas in X2's case, one movie, Avengers, it was five, I think. Iron Man 1, 2, Cap, Hulk, Thor. Five movies. And seeing it all come together for that first time, uh, with Loki as the villain, and this underpinning of Thanos throughout. Man, fucking awesome. Um, repeat viewings, it doesn't hit me as hard. Like, man, I just, like, it's still a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but it's not like I could rewatch Winter Soldier all fucking day, whereas Avengers, you know, seeing it once every now and then is enough. And that's why I think it kind of stays down the list a little bit. Some of the other view movies, I don't mind watching, you know, on repeat viewings much more quickly, and that kind of plays into some of my rankings, at least. All right, number seven, still Marvel, but not Marvel proper, this time Sony, and that's Spider-Man 2, because man, up until whatever they do with Spider-Man Homecoming, that is the best Spider-Man movie we've got, because number one, I think it is still the best com- okay, I'll take that back. It's the second best comic book villain, period, that we've had in live action. Obviously, the first one's the Joker. Not even close, it's Heath Ledger, that thing, his- the fact that he wasn't nominated for anything, or was he nominated posthumously? I don't know if he was, but he should have been if he wasn't, because holy goddamn shit, is that a great, great villain, regardless of the fact that it's the Joker, if it's called something else, still a great fucking villain. And Doc Ock, his kind of, his 
journey into being a villain and his redemption at the end, man, that's just a really satisfying arc that we don't see in other comic book movies. Loki's the closest we get uh, in the Thor and Avengers movies, and maybe he'll get there, but Spider-Man 2 did it in one movie. And Loki's been stretched out across, you know, other films, and so maybe it's too much of a good thing. Maybe that's why he's my third favorite villain. Uh, but man, Doc Ock, shouldn't have worked, because it's a weird villain. I mean, it is, but Alfred Molina was fucking awesome in Spider-Man 2. And him and him by himself elevates that movie, not to mention the great, uh, you know, train scene and the whole, like, getting his powers back thing with the car flipping through the restaurant. Fucking awesome. Okay, number five. Now, there's a lot of Marvel, and this one's back to Marvel proper, and that's the most second most recent one, and that'd be Captain America Civil War. Because, man, that movie takes the best of the Avengers and adds a little more Captain America Winter Soldier to the mix, and there's some actual, like, pathos and deep, like, deep conflict within the team. It's a lot more personal, more intimate, less, oh, the world's ending type thing. And I like movies more like that. I think we've all seen enough of, oh, big space laser in the sky and rubble all around it, and we gotta go save the day. So Civil War didn't do that, whereas Avengers did, and that's why I think Civil War is a, is a better film, and it's a lot more fun to watch, because holy shit, that Ant-Man scene! And the Spider-Man scene! And all these other scenes that are fucking awesome! And Cap and Bucky and, uh, oh, Falcon, and their scenes in the car where they're like, could you move your seat up? That whole underpass scene. Like, there's all these different moments that just make you go, fuck yeah, that was awesome. And number four is the movie that started this whole Marvel phase off, at least in phase one, and that's Iron Man. The casting of Robert Downey Jr., Jeff Bridges as the villain, even if he isn't a great written villain, he's, you know, acted the hell out of it by Jeff Bridges, which is awesome. Uh, the stuff with S.H.I.E.L.D. and its kind of intera- introduction into the MCU, especially Clark, Clark Gregg, who is awesome and remains awesome even four seasons into a show that, by all means, shouldn't really have worked for four seasons, but Clark Gregg's friggin' awesome, and Phil Coulson is awesome. And I really hope we get him back in the MCU. Like, seriously, just have him show up and be like, hey, I died. It was weird. Things happened. Went crazy. Alien blood. Ran shield. Now I'm here. And it'd be an awesome, like, opening montage to a movie to have Phil Coulson just, like, putting on a suit and you see the hand come on and, like, flashbacks to all the stuff that's happened in AOS and, like, the scene where his brain's being worked on and he's begging for death and all this other kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden he just, you, you see the tie come up and, like, the shield, like, badge go in the, in the coat pocket. And pan up, it's Clark Craig. Be fucking awesome. But that's me kind of going off point. Iron Man is my fourth favorite comic book movie. And number three is one I mentioned, or at least I mentioned the villain on, uh, a little farther down the list, and that'd be the Dark Knight. Uh, it's, I think, the best villain focused, because it is kind of villain focused. All the really, all the, a lot of the Batman ones are, except for maybe Begins, just because it's, it's focused on Bruce Wayne coming back into the world. Uh, but the, the, the second two are more focused on how the villain affects the world. And uh, the best comic book villain, like I mentioned, in Heath Ledger. You got some awesome action scenes with Batman. He's actually kind of almost a detective in this one, with figuring out, like, the bullet fragments and the fingerprints and unraveling the Joker mystery. And the fact that it remains a mystery is one of the best things I think Christopher Nolan did in that entire trilogy, is not giving you a definitive answer of who the hell the Joker is, because it doesn't matter. And that's the point, is he is just chaos incarnate, and, you know, how he affects the people, the world around him at large is the interesting part of the character, not he himself. And the journey that the rest of the characters go on, you know, like the introduction of Two-Face, Aaron Eckhart, Gary Oldman, his Jim Gordon, was was awesome. And they, I think they, had they ended the franchise there, that would have been awesome. But they made Dark Knight Rises, which isn't as good of a film. Still good, it's a good movie, but it's not like, man, if there was ever a movie that was going to break through that barrier and get nominated for some awards, which now Deadpool is... Uh, oh, I didn't have Deadpool on this list. I fucked up. Deadpool's somewhere in this list. Sorry, I forgot about Deadpool. But yeah, Dark Knight's 3. Number 2, and that's one that a lot of people haven't watched, sadly, and you should, because it's got your boy Carl Urban, who I mentioned at number 10, which was kind of a foreshadowing, because, oh my god, Dread 3D was fucking amazing. Holy shit! Number 1, it's one of the best action movies of all time. Period. Fucking amazing. Super simple premise. Gotta get up to the 200th floor of a building and kill a bunch of dudes along the way. But it is based on a comic book. In uh, one of the more, you know, long-running comic book series out there, uh, 2080, I think. They nail the world. They nail the the kind of post-apocalypse kind of commentary on where America was when everything went to shit uh, in the comic book. Uh, just the, the physical grittiness of the world. The fact that he doesn't take the helmet off. He is just here to do be a judge. Like, he's not here to 
you know, give monologues and shit. He's just fucking Judge Dredd. And, like, there's no relationship interaction with his sidekick, and it's just a hell of a ride from start to finish. Like, an hour 40 minutes, I think, tops, and it's a hell of a ride. And I think it's the best, one of the best action movies I've ever watched. I'd put it up there with John Wick and Die Hard, the first one, in terms of, man, grab your popcorn, strap in, you're not fucking going anywhere. And number one in my favorite comic book movies of all time list that's always going to be ever-changing because we're getting so many movies coming out in the next few years, oh my god, is Captain America Winter Soldier. Now the reason I like this one so much is kind of twofold. Number one, it's Captain America. You take this, you know, beacon of morality, this guy that's just going to do the right thing for the right reasons, a la Superman, put him in a dark world of kind of a murky... We're doing things, you know, maybe for the right intentions, but we're doing really bad stuff, you know, hoping for a good outcome. Have him react to all these things. Like Project Insight, you know, seeing, like, this isn't freedom, this is fear. Amazing line. Like, it really speaks to his character that, man, he doesn't really fit in with this world at all, but he's still got to make a go of it because he's Captain America, and of course he is. He has instant chemistry with Falcon. Um, I really like the interplay with him and Black Widow. I was very sad when they cut off the stuff with, with Hawkeye, because apparently there's his scene with how he changed uniforms and how Hawkeye fit into it was awesome, but that got cut. And then his the, the movie's effect on the MCU at large and the literal destruction of S.H.I.E.L.D. was such a big moment for the MCU, and it changed everything going forward in small ways, some in big ways, gave rise to a TV show. It did a lot. Like, a lot. Affected an entire cinematic universe, but was still its own self-contained story that got its message across by the credits. Like, it wasn't just a cliffhanger. It was a completed movie. It was a finished product. Not a sequel. Or, I mean, it was a sequel, but not like a pickup, you know, continuing a story sequel. It was just a, a second movie, a second story with this character. It did that exceptionally well. And I was just blown away by that movie. Uh, especially, the season, like, that opening scene where he's climbing on the boat and just like, damn. The Russo brothers, holy shit. They can direct a fucking superhero movie. God damn. And I, I cannot wait to see what they do with Avengers when they take the helm uh, going forward for Avengers, the Infinity Gauntlet story. Because that's going to be so awesome. And we all know it is. So that's my top ten of the comic book movies. What am I at? Quite a bit longer than I wanted to go. But I could have gone way longer on all this topic, as many of you who watch this show know. I could have gone on for a long time about this topic, so let me know what your top ten is, or how wrong I am, or what I should maybe consider changing in the comments below. As always, like, subscribe, share, help me grow this things. And I think tomorrow, maybe Friday, uh, going into New Year's Day weekend, you're going to see my 2016 wrap-up video. And I think that's going to be it for today's videos. I might shoot, or that one, oh, that's my fourth one I'm going to shoot today. So, you'll see a different shirt in 2017, I promise. See ya!